How, how much money do I invest? How much money do I need to invest is another very common, popular question. Many times people ask it uh, from the perspective of how much do I need to invest to retire, um, which can, can be a, a, a difficult question, but we can answer that in this way. Generally, you want to try to save 10% uh, towards your investments. You want to try to invest 10%. That's just a good number uh, if you can get to it because the ratios, that means that if I started investing at a young enough age and I put 10% away in an investment and it's growing at a, at a reasonable rate, say a, a five and a half, six percent return over the life of that investment, that's going to equate to about the same dollars uh, that I'm living in today that I can retire on. So a general rule that we say is try for 10%. Try to get 10%. If you got a 401k and they got a match of 6%, try to do 10%. You're getting matched to 6, you do 10, you've got a very good number there that's, that's helping you to retire. Um, the, the key thing is sometimes people say, well, and, and, and listen, there's people that are listening that I, I know, you say, well, I can't do 10%. I know, I, I've got kids, and kids are m money snatchers. That's what they're on the earth to do, is snatch all your money and take it away. And uh, Just kidding, a little bit. Um, with children, it, they cost. Life comes at us. We know that. It's hard. And so you say, I can't do 10%. 1%. Try 1%, because anything you can get in the ground, it's like that seed of kernel. You hold it in your hand, that's all it's ever going to be. The moment you scratch out dirt, put it in the ground, that's the least it will ever be. A dollar's the same way. And I had a conversation with somebody just recently on very similar lines. They came into some money, and their thinking was, we can buy this, this, and this. I said, that's poverty thinking. I do speak directly to people. That's why I usually have to have a buffer. But I said, it's poverty thinking. I had that mentality. A wealthy person or a person who thinks in terms of building wealth, not, not, not you have a lot of money, but a wealthy thinker thinks in terms, I just got $100,000. I'm going to invest it. That's the least it's ever going to be. It's never going to be any less than that because I'm going to invest it and grow it and not live on more than that than I can earn off of it to eat into the principal. That's what we want you to think. We want to shift how you think and reframe our thought process so that if we do get money, have money, it's, it's something that we invest. That's what compounding does. So if you can do 1%, at least it's earning something, at least it's doing it. As much as you can do is great. 10% is, is kind of the goal uh, at a minimum, but anything will start compounding for you. I would say I've always had an, exp an expression, if you can in tithe 10% and invest 10%, you'll never be broke. That's right. And it Good. just figures. You, you, you're doing what God, for taking care of God, God That's takes right. care of you. You take care of your, with what you do. Now, as Don has said, sometimes you, even with tithing, you start where you are and build. Yeah. But usually when people get excited yeah. about investing and, and seeing it, they will find things they can give up. It's worth it. I may have to give up that latte or something mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. get that little bit of money going. But you get excited about it, and you don't have to have that stimulus. You'll do it yeah. because you, you want to do it. So in a, in a very simple way, it's mentally. You've got to make the choice. Yeah. I choose to do what I have to do and not be lazy. And, and exactly, and delayed gratification is a hard thing for all of us because in delaying my gratification, there's all these things. Well, what if, I, what if I die tomorrow and I didn't get to live the day? What if something happens? What if the world turns upside down and blows up? So de delayed gratification in any, many ways is a very tough mental challenge because I want to balance living today. I don't want to just suffer, suffer, suffer. And there is a balance in that. You don't want to suffer, suffer, suffer and build up a great nest egg and then something happened, you not use it. But you have to practice at some level delayed gratification. It is, it, I believe, a biblical principle that you can't eat all of your seed now. And so by tithing, it's my faith that God is involved in my finances. By sowing in, in, into investments, it's saying that I'm building and holding for my future because that protects my dollars from deflating and helps secure my future. So at some level, 
we have to practice delayed gratification, even though it is a difficult thing to do. Um, everybody else is buying a new car. I'm putting money away and driving an old, har uh, old car that barely runs. That's a very tough discipline not to go, well, wait a minute, I could take out some money and buy a nice car, and I could be right there with everybody else. But you have to understand that you're building for your future. First of all, you shouldn't be looking at other people's cars because you don't know what they're doing. You have to focus on what you're doing and say, I've got to put away from my future and build for that future. Some years ago, there was a book that came out called The Millionaire Next Door. Yeah. And they were talking about that you would never know that the person living next door to you was a millionaire. Today, yeah. they'd be a multimillionaire because of their lifestyle, which mm -hmm. is what you're talking about. Yeah. The lifestyle, yeah. usually people get satisfied with that lifestyle yeah. and delay those, those gratifications until they can afford them. And then when they can afford them, they don't necessarily want them. That's so right. It and it, yeah, and doing that, which is a great book. It's still a great read today. You know, in profiling those people, those millionaires and what they did in their research in that book, they found out they didn't shop at Saks Fifth Avenue and uh, all of the, the high-end places. They were at J.C. Penney's. They were practical. And what they were doing is not that they could do that, delayed gratification they were living at this level so they could have that security more long term and that's what we have to practice that's what we do and investing helps us do that the, the, the thing that we say so often is if you get investing it's just like saving you put a dollar and ten dollars and fifteen and twenty and all of a sudden you start to get excited because you see some growth um, when you begin to invest and you see your money go up a little bit and you say wow okay it does something to our psyche and to the discipline of who we are. So get started, no matter how small it is, um, get something invested and you will never regret it.